Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Wise Decision Maker Show, where we help you make the wisest and most profitable decisions. My name is Dr. Gleb Sapurski. I'm the CEO of Disaster Avoidance Experts, the future work consultancy that sponsors the Wise Decision Maker Show. And I'm joined today by Sharon D'Souza. Sharon, can you please share a little bit about yourself and tell us about what you do? Well, I am the president of the Public Service Alliance of Canada. And as such, we represent over 245,000 members coast to coast mm -hmm. to coast. And predominantly, they are federal public sector workers. However, we represent members um, at casinos, First Nation police officers, you name it. It's quite a diverse membership. And tell me a little bit about what's been happening with the federal government's return to office mandate and what you've been doing about it. You've been working on a campaign and about it. You've also been working on a court case. Tell us a little bit more about the context of what we're dealing with here. Well, as you all know, we went through the pandemic and the government still had to run. So what we entered into was remote work agreements where our members would work from home. And it was quite productive and it was mm -hmm. interesting. Uh, the work got done. There was a little bit more work-life balance. People did not mm -hmm. get stuck in traffic. Um, and so what had happened is we entered mm -hmm. into negotiations as well in 2023. And part of the negotiations was a discussion on accessibility to uh, remote work, which mm -hmm. means that it would not be unreasonably denied. And if it did, we would have the opportunity uh, to be able to find out why, and it would be the decision could be reviewed. Now, this was working really well, and then the government arbitrarily announced that they would want everyone to return mm -hmm. to the office three days a week. Now, I'm sure people are wondering, why would this be an issue? Well, for a lot of people, because of work-life balance, they had commitments. If you've got children, you know, trying to find an accessible, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. good uh, child care center in Canada is really, really difficult. Mm -hmm. And spaces are quite limited. If you needed to bridge between um, picking your child up from the bus mm -hmm. stop at school, you were able to do all of these little things. If you had, uh, for instance, parental care, you know you're still able to do your job, but it made it more flexible and even to participate with the community. Uh, and mm. as such, now coming back into work, we knew without a doubt that this would create con uh, congestion on the roads. We have a lot of first responders that are required to be in the office. Sure. And what this did, it actually created traffic backlogs mm. uh, so commute times were increased. And as you know, the environment itself was affected because yeah. of all the carcinogens in the air. But also at the same time, there wasn't enough spaces in these mm. buildings to house everyone. And there's issues with the buildings. There's like bats, mice, rats, mm. uh, bed bugs. Uh, we've seen snakes. Mm. These buildings are in deplorable conditions. And so it just did not make sense why they were doing this. And we did what's known as an access to information in mm -hmm. which you can request uh, information on a particular government with a particular topic for the government. And in doing so, we find out that there's an actual study done from Statistics Canada that mm -hmm. started in 2019 to 2023 and uh, I can tell you, the stats were astounding. It found mm -hmm. that we were being more productive when we worked remotely. Oh. So the question is, why did they make the decision? We mm -hmm. also know that there was a plea from various levels of government. Uh, the mayors, for instance, were saying in yeah. major cities that they were losing revenues. Mm -hmm. But still, that didn't make sense, especially when you couldn't house everyone in a specific area. And through the pandemic, they actually had uh, hired quite a few people who were not in these downtown cores. For mm -hmm. instance, um, we have members 
who report to Ottawa, Ontario, and yet they live in Newfoundland. That would require a flight every day to get to work Mm, and to return, which makes no sense. Mm -hmm. So this was a political decision that was made, and the basis was to provide more revenue for cities. But we know that that's not necessarily what's going to be a good revenue generating idea and long term mm. solution for these uh, cities. And that makes so sense. we decided uh, to launch a campaign because mm. most unions will know that oftentimes when it comes to uh, pushing the nature of work or the rights, it's usually mm-hmm. the unions that do that, mm. right? such sure. as maternity leave. It was unions that fought for maternity leave. Mm-hmm. And uh, so we launched our campaign uh, because their decision just had no merit. It was arbitrarily mm-hmm. done. And throughout this whole process, if you can imagine, there was zero consultation from oh. any of the unions. So here we are, full circle. Hmm. And we're taking on this fight because it's not just about federal public sector workers. This is mm-hmm. about the nature of work. And the fact that we can't close our eyes and pretend the pandemic didn't happen. The nature of work has changed and people want more work-life balance, but Mm -hmm. also it's good for the environment and those costly buildings that are not necessarily, you know, good for a workplace can be converted Mm -hmm. into sustainable housing, which can then provide actual revenues, long-term revenues to these urban cities. Sure. So so in terms of productivity, that's definitely research out there. For for example, about three weeks ago, a study came out showing, looking at the UK, the public service sector, and specifically at police. And it found that police were about 12% more productive when they were working remotely because they weren't distracted than when they were working in the office for the activities that could be done when they were working remotely. And so that's an example of, I'm sure it's the same case is going to be in Canada that's happening in the UK. So we definitely have research on that. I've seen the government argue that they want people to be in the office to do more collaboration. And I'm curious to ask, so I've done training, I've done expert witness work on questions about on remote work as an expert. I've done training for the government of Northwest Territories, so the regional government on how to do remote and hybrid work effectively. I've done training for the government of Nova Scotia for the managers, and they were definitely concerned that they couldn't have as much collaboration when people were working remotely. And I taught them that they actually can if they use best practices, if they're trained, if their managers are trained on how to do so. Do you know if the federal government ever did any training for their managers on how to facilitate collaboration when people are not working in the office? To be honest with you, I have no clue. I could Mm. not tell you what training that they've had. But Mm. what I find interesting is when people are coming into work, they're Mm. working in small cubicles, oftentimes sharing them, depending on who's Mm. coming in. And they're working on platforms such as MS Teams. Mm. And so it's not in terms of a culture or collaboration where it's in-person culture or collaboration. As for training or best practices, it's extremely difficult um, Mm -hmm. to uh, state whether or not they were properly trained. Mm -hmm. But as far as I'm concerned, something right must be happening if people were productive and they did a four-year study. So Mm -hmm. something must be going right In Mm -hmm. fact, recent uh, studies have shown as people have entered into the office the last couple of months, productivity Mm -hmm. has gone down. Sure. So we know without a doubt that there's an impact here. Mm -hmm. And if there is a management level issue, then it really, the onus is on the government to train Mm -hmm. their managers, not the union. Of course, of course. So just curious about that. Now let's talk about the lawsuit. So you've also launched a lawsuit. And I'm quite familiar with the remote work lawsuits. I've participated as an expert witness in a number of them. We're just talking before the interview about me doing a deposition after the interview. And so I'm curious to ask you, 
whether the government for its side has presented any expert witnesses, any experts who are defending the idea that you need to spend more time in the office rather than less. So what I could tell you is that we haven't had a hearing date yet. Mm -hmm. So we are not privileged to any information that they will present and mm -hmm. we'll only know at the time of the hearing. Mm -hmm. Tell the audience a little bit more about the lawsuit so that they understand the context. I'm more familiar with these sorts mm -hmm. of lawsuits. What are you trying to achieve? What's your goal? What's the objective there? Well, as far as I'm aware, the lawsuit mm -hmm. is a mechanism in which we can actually challenge this employer. Once mm -hmm. again, there's a lack of consultation. The decision was made arbitrarily without any mm -hmm. fact or proof. And there needs to be accountability. At the mm -hmm. end of the day, this is an employer who is affecting the lives of thousands of people. And yet there's zero accountability. So mm -hmm. we are using every single recourse mechanism available to us in order to challenge this employer. And what was interesting is a preliminary hearing was heard what to dismiss the case. And yet a judge agreed to allow it to go to a hearing. Mm -hmm. So to me, there that in itself is a win because I don't mm -hmm. believe the government of Canada has ever been challenged like this. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So I know that the elections in Canada are not are coming up in a reasonably quick amount of time. Mm -hmm. And the Trudeau government has done some things like sending checks in the mail to make itself more popular. To what extent do you think this action to get people back into mm -hmm. the office is meant to have any sort of relation to the election campaign? I could not comment in terms of the impact uh, or the rationale, uh, mm -hmm. the correlation to the elections. Mm -hmm. What I can tell you without a doubt is that our members are, you know, taxpayers. They vote in the election and they vote to elect their employer. And so I will say to you, there's been many, many instances in which we've seen a lack of consultation where their work has been affected. And mm -hmm. so will this become an election issue? I have no doubt. Mm -hmm. And I will also mm -hmm. say those people who've been stuck in, uh, you know, those responders who are required to go into work that are mm -hmm. stuck in hour plus long commutes are mm -hmm. not going to forget this either because mm -hmm. there is impact to those who it is necessary for them to show up to work mm -hmm. uh, in an office or as a first responder in a hospital or uh, ambulance. It's really important for them to um, be able to be there in a timely fashion. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're just seeing cars idle, idle on the highways. Mm. Tell us a little bit more about what do you think will be the broader impact of this directive for citizens for taxpayers what will how will they experience the impact besides the idling of cars and the additional traffic well let's look at this from a very big picture right mm -hmm. we're talking about the environment so future generations mm -hmm. when you think of those car carcinogens that are out there in the environment that mm -hmm. contributes to pollution yes they're yeah. impacted but here's a thought this isn't about every person wanting to work remotely. This mm -hmm. is about where it's possible and the job allows mm -hmm. having that opportunity. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're fighting for. And it's not just for our members. It's for every single person. And it's about work-life balance. In an mm -hmm. age where mental health is severely impacted, why would you not give someone the opportunity to do that if they're more productive. Mm. In terms of collaboration, we've seen a whole other world that occurs virtually and there's ways to collaborate. Mm. So if the largest employer in Canada can make it work, that means any other employer will have the capacity and be able to push that bar mm. forward. Excellent. Well, that's a great message to leave us with. Are there any final thoughts before we wrap up? Thank you very much for your time and joining us in our fight for remote work. 
And thank you, Sharon, for joining us. And thank you to the audience for, for checking out another episode of The Wise Decision Maker Show. Please make sure to subscribe wherever you check out the show and leave a review. It helps others discover the show and it helps us improve the show.